Firstly, but firstly, what is a dedication? Well, a dedication is firmly grounded in scripture for a start, and it follows the life of Jesus. As Christ followers, Jesus Christ's life is it's our ultimate um, pattern for our lives. And not how a church or a religion does things or a denomination, but how how he modelled to us the way for us to live. Now, we uh, we kind of understand that uh, in the way he loved. That's how we're called to love in the way he forgave. That's how we're called to forgive, etc. How he ministered. That's how we're called to minister. So we also follow the pattern of his life from a baby and growing up. And that basically gives us the definition of a dedication. We find that in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 onwards. It says this, 40 days after the birth of her son, Mary and Joseph took baby Jesus to Jerusalem to be dedicated before the Lord. So today we're bringing Isabella before the Lord. The Bible calls this dedicating, dedicating to God. Now, you probably need to know when when I was two or three months old, I don't really remember, I was baptised into the Anglican church. It's called a christening. My mum and dad, well, they didn't know God. They didn't have a relationship with Jesus. They thought it was just a good idea, just the the thing to be done. The rest of the family had done it. So they just followed in that pattern. So the vicar put water on me. He sprinkled me and declared he, Paul Andrew Bryars. Yes, that's my name. Paul Andrew Bryars is now part of the body. He is a Christian. Oh, boy. Oh boy, how wrong he was. I don't know what someone slipped into that holy water or whether they just got a bad shipment that day. They should have got their money back, that's for sure. Because from that day, I was just a professional sinner. I can't even mention on this live stream or in church the things I got up to in school and high school, especially. It's just off limits. Hey, who knows that a, a swimming pool of holy water can't make you a Christian? Because Christian means a follower of Christ, a follower of Christ. And as we dedicate Isabella today, the best that we can pray for, the very best that we could hope for is that Isabella would choose one day to follow Jesus Christ herself. And one day, one day make her own personal decision to follow Christ and then herself make the decision to be baptised when when she fully understands what she's doing. Dedication then, well, dedication is more for the parents to make that commitment that they will do all that they can to help Isabella choose to follow Jesus when she's old enough to decide for herself, to build a Um, to build a Christian environment and a home where Jesus is central. Um, A few years ago, I heard this funny story. Uh, After the dedication of his baby brother in church, little Johnny cried all the way home. Eventually, his father asked him three times, what was wrong? Finally, the boy replied, that pastor said he wanted us to be brought up in a Christian home, but I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> so, so in life church, so in, in life church, the example we follow is of Jesus himself. From around a month old, we've just read it in Luke 2, 22, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem to dedicate him to the Lord. And it's interesting, after the dedication, four things resulted from that moment, four things. If you jump further in chapter 2 to verse 39, it says, Later they returned to Galilee, to their own hometown of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. I love that. And and today we pray for nothing less for Isabella. We pray for those four things. Firstly, that she will grow. Yeah, that she will be healthy and vibrant. Well, maybe that's an easy prayer. Of course, she's going to grow. She's already growing. Every time I see her, she's grown. But we pray that 
we pray that also her inner self, the, the real Isabella, will develop and grow also. And then secondly, we pray that she will be strong in body and character, strong, strong in her faith, strong in her love of God. And then thirdly, we also pray that she will be full of wisdom to make to make good decisions in a world in a world today, sadly, that doesn't acknowledge good and evil, right and wrong. Hey, if anybody watching this today, I just want to encourage you, it's never too late, parents, to pray this in 2021 over your children, to pray for wisdom, whether your kids are 24 weeks or 24 years of age, praying for wisdom that they will make good choices in their lives. And then lastly, number four, that she will have the grace of God upon her. There's something special when you see the, the grace of God on a child. So that's our prayer. But that's not the end of the story. So Jesus was dedicated at a few weeks old. Now, if we jump forward 12 years, that's just a few verses in the Bible to verse 42. This is 12 years later. Verse 42, when he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast. I want you to underline this if you've not underlined your Bible here. According to their custom. Now, note here. It, it was the parents' custom or habit of taking their kids to the house of God. It had become their culture to expose their children to the things of God. Now, that might sound, it might sound old fashioned today, but here it is right in God's word. Uh, verse 43, after, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Uh, jumping to verse 49. Why were you searching for me? Jesus asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Now, now here's the thing. Dedication is more for, um, for us as parents and the church than it is for little Isabella, who won't remember much about this day when she grows up. For us as parents, I've got to say that's a challenge. That's a challenging thing. There, there will be a thousand reasons to not be in the Father's house on, on the Sabbath, on the Lord's Day, whether that's a life local or an online or, or in a bar, wherever we meet in the future. I planted a church in Africa, we met outside, but it was still church. There will be a thousand reasons, tired, busy, holiday, another holiday, birthday party, work, uh, the career, both parents working hard every hour that God sends. There will always be reasons. And then there'll just be the simple reason of I just don't feel like it. Sadly, in, in the last decade, a new question has been asked of the church. Is it really necessary? I mean, I love Jesus, but I'm not too fussy on the church. Oh, friend, read the word of God. That's impossible. That's impossible. Jesus, I love your head, but I'm not fussy about your body. That sounds really, really weird. And that's a challenge in this day and generation. It's also a challenge for us as a church, for us as a church family, because we have a responsibility to create the right soil and atmosphere and place for Isabella to grow in her faith. I lived in Africa for many years and in Africa I learned an old proverb, a, a wise saying. They say in Africa that it takes the whole village to raise a child and I believe that. I personally believe that's true. But I also believe it's true that I believe it takes the whole church to raise a Christian child. Oh, church, what a responsibility today. How, how are we loving today for Isabella's sake? How committed are we as an example for Isabella to follow? Are, are we all going to take the role of God parents for her today? Oh, God forbid that she would find us, she would find me half-hearted and irrelevant and uncommitted in my faith or even worse, um, unforgiving and religious, God forbid. If that's even the case, then the good news is this. Today, 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 let's create some new customs if we've lost them. Let's create some new habits of the heart, if only for the children in our village. Further on in the book of Luke, we see the results of those habits. 18 years later, just a couple of chapters in the word of God, but it's 18 years later, Luke 4 
Verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Verse 16, he came to Nazareth where he had been raised up and as he always did on the Sabbath. Oh, powerful words. As he always did, his custom, his habit, he went to the meeting place. Why? Because it was his habit, his custom. And from that day, his ministry began on, I would, I would uh, det uh, uh, say to you today, on that foundation. So today we declare as parents, this is now our custom. This is our priority in our lives. As a church, church, we promise that this little girl, well, we will help her. We will be around for her. And, and you know what? We, we believe that she will probably first see Jesus in us. What a responsibility. Her earliest encounters with Jesus will be you and it will be me. And I want to encourage you to take seriously our responsibility to be role models for her and all the other children that follow her into Life Church. So that leads us to the dedication moment. Right there, right now, in the Rex Cinema, we will ask the parents to make this promise. Will you promise, with God's help, to support and love Isabella? by providing the opportunity for her to grow up in the family of faith with the hope that she will someday come to know Jesus as her own personal Lord and Saviour. Will you, to the best of your ability and with God's help, provide a loving family environment in which you can grow in love and obedience to God? And then to the church, standing there in the rec cinema, to the church, Will you encourage Isabella to grow in faith so that she might later be received into the fellowship of the church by her own choice of baptism, fully partaking in the work and worship of the church? And so that concludes our dedication service today.